Okay, welcome back. Um, continuing on with integrals, integrals, integrals. Um, 8.3, you're dealing with trig integrals. Right? So uh, begin with your identities. So I presume you kind of know um, how to, you know, the reference angles for the trig functions, like the sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. I, I presume you know all that stuff. I, I pr also presume you kind of know uh, stuff like uh, tangent is sine over cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Uh, secant is 1 over cos. I assume you know all that stuff. Okay. Um, you may not be as strong as uh, on uh, which particular trig identities you need to know, though. Okay, so um, there's only basically you know six or seven of them. Uh, let's remind you, and you need to have these memorized. Okay, so the first one, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Th these guys are known as Pythagorean identities. If you divide everything by cosine squared, you'll get tan squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. Um, if you divide the first equation by cosine, or sorry, by sine, then you'll get 1 plus secant squared theta, cos oh, crap, cosecant squared theta. No, cotan. <laughs> you'll get 1 plus cotan squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. Okay, so there's the uh, original. And then there's these versions, and, and the tan and the secant and the cotan formulas go together. The co-formulas, co-angle formulas here. So not, not co-angle, yes, co-angle. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of how I think of them. Um, you need these memorized, but you also need to be flexible enough to, to realize other things, right? So I need to be able to realize that 1 minus cosine squared theta is sine squared theta. I need to be able to recognize that. Um, tan squared theta can be rewritten as secant squared theta minus 1. I right? also need to be able to deal with other angles. So in particular, um, sine squared of 5 theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of 5 theta. And then other things, 3 sine squared of 8 theta is equal to 3 minus 3 cosine squared of 8 theta. Okay, so you kind of need to, you know, it's you need to have these memorized, but you also need to be able to identify them in the wild, right? Okay, um, some other formulas then, the half angle and the double angle formulas, there's only three of them here. Um, so I need sine squared of theta equals 1 uh, minus, I should be sine squared, sorry, 1 minus cosine of 2 theta all over 2, Cosine squared of theta equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta all over 2. And then I, this last guy, sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. Again, you need to be able to identify these in the wild. Um, so you need these memorized. You need these guys memorized. But you need to be able to recognize them as well. So in this particular case, you know, something like sine squared of 5 theta. How would I rewrite that? That would be 1 minus cosine of 10 theta, right, all over 2. Um, so you just double this angle. It's called the half angle formula, I think. But when we use it, we're going to be doubling the angle, right? Um, other things, the so sine of theta, you can rewrite as 2 sine of theta over 2 times cosine of theta over 2. So whenever you use this formula in this direction, you're halving the angle. It's called the double angle formula, but the way we use it, you're halving all the time. Okay? Um, some other things that may help you in your journey. Remember, cosine is an even function, so cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x. And sine is an odd function. So sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. Great. That's pretty much it. Um, you know, I, I, again, I expect you to know by heart the derivatives and the integrals of the, of the trig functions. I won't harass you with that in this video. OK, so what's going to be coming at you is a bunch of trig integrals and um, later on, a lot of the integrals we look at will devolve 
uh, uh, into these type of integrals. Okay, so it's not like we see them once and never see them again. No, um, they will pop up here and there, and we need to be able to uh, attack them. So in the book, what they're going to do is kind of try to classify each one. You know, if you're writing a computer program, this would be uh, the bomb, so to speak. So, um, so these type of problems, how do I deal with these? It's, it's going to be a matter of pushing back and then writing everything in terms of either sine or cosine and uh, going from there. So let's look at one first, and, and that'll give you sort of the, the flavor of these types of problems. So I have sine cubed x cosine squared x dx, right? So what? I want to push back to uh, get an even powered on my sine, because once I have that even powered, I use the Pythagorean identity to turn it into a cosine, then do a u sub for the cosine, and the uh, result of the u sub will be uh, a sign that, that would cancel out the one I pushed back. Okay, so what? Okay, so let me show you. I'm pushing back one factor of sine. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this guy into cosines using Pythagor the Pythagorean identities. So sine squared is the same as 1 minus cosine squared. Then I'm going to do a u sub for cosine. Okay, so u equals cosine of x. du is negative sine of x dx. So dx is negative du over sine of x. Okay, okay so here I go then. I'll have 1 minus u squared times u squared times sine of x times dx, which is now negative du all over sine x. The sine x is divide out. I'll have um, negative u squared, and I can distribute that. The result of that distribution, when I attach the negative 1 to the u squared, I'll have negative u squared plus u to the fourth. Let's rewrite that as u to the fourth minus u squared. And then it's just a power rule integral, right? So you end up with u to the fifth over five, minus u to the third over three, plus c, and then back substitute. You get um, cosine to the fifth x all over five, minus cosine uh, to the third x over three, plus c. So you get like a, a trigonometric polynomial sort of resulting from the integral of a product. Okay, so what's the deal here? What's kind of the program that I would code? Uh, I would say um, push uh, when m is odd. So if m odd, then um, firstly, I guess push back one factor of sine x. Secondly, convert remaining sine x's to cosine, and you use your Pythagorean formula to do that. So sine squared x will end up being 1 minus cosine squared x. And then thirdly, um, let u be um, cosine. So you want your u sub to be basically the integral of the thing you're pushing back. Okay, because once you let u equal this, the derivative will be this thing, and it'll cancel out in the substitution. Okay. This is it, man. This is basically the idea for the rest of the section. Um, the rest of it is just kind of variations on this theme, and then uh, what to do when you don't fit into these particular kind of uh, programs, right? So let's look at um, number two. Okay, so here I have kind of the version when cosine has an odd degree. So cosine cubed sine to the fourth x dx. So in this case, you're going to push back a cosine. Okay? So I'll have the integral of cosine squared x sine to the fourth x times cosine x dx. 
uh, eventually we'll make our u substitution sine. Okay, so now I want to get all of this in terms of sine, so I use my Pythagorean identities. Cosine squared is the same as 1 minus sine squared. And then I have sine to the fourth, x, and then um, cosine x dx. So I'm going to let my u be sine x. du is just straight up cosine x dx. So I could replace everything. I got 1 minus u squared times u to the fourth times, well, cosine x dx is just du. So let's just put du there. And so I can distribute u to the fourth minus u to the sixth du. And then integrate. So I get um, u to the fifth all over 5 minus u to the seventh over 7 plus c. Back substitute. So I'll have sine uh, to the fifth power of x all over 5 minus sine to the seventh power of x all over 7, and then plus my integration constant. Okay? Okay. Um, all right, so that's kind of our standard operating procedure. Um, the next one is what to do when our... Uh, we, we don't have a cosine or sine involved. We maybe just have something like cosine to the nth power of x dx, or um, the integral of sine to the nth power of x dx. And on, additionally, our nth power has to be uh, even for this next technique to work. And you may have seen this in the homework. Somebody brought me uh, the integral of sine squared. Okay, they have, we're having trouble figuring that thing out sine squared x dx. Right. So for these cases, you're using those half angle formulas. So the integral of sine squared is 1 minus sine of, uh, sorry, 1 minus cosine of 2x all over 2 dx. And then all you have to do is butterfly. If you want to, you can factor out a 1 half. Okay. Maybe that's better. Factor out the one half, and then you have one minus cosine of two x dx, and then you can integrate uh, the integral of the difference is the integral of the difference of the integral. So you have one half times x um, minus sine of two x all over two plus c, and then of course distribute. So you get one half x minus sine of two x all over four. Let's see. So it's just a matter of the half angle point. Let's do one more. Right. So uh, let's try number nine. We have the integral of cosine squared 3x dx. Right. So in this case, uh, 1 plus cosine of, and you double this angle. Okay, so it's cosine of 6x all over 2 dx. I can factor out the 1 half and then have the integral of 1 plus cosine of 6x dx. And then uh, 1 half times x plus the integral of cosine is sine 6x. And then you have to divide by 6. Once you do your u sub, you'll get a constant 1 6 to pull out. And it'll be the integral of sine, the integral of cosine u which is the integral of sine u times 1 6. Uh, distribute the 1 half back in, and 1 half x plus sine 6x all over 12 plus c. Okay, um, the book will have Wallace's formula in there, which is really neat. Um, I encourage you to go take a, a check. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, section 3 we're working with instead of cosine sine, secant tans. Okay, so you have the secant mx times tan nx dx. Uh, it'll work extremely similar to the integrals of sine cosines, except the thing they're pushing back, because we always push back kind of the derivative of the u sub, um, our, our pushbacks will be um, secant tans or secant squares. So if 
you eventually do a u sub for um, secant x. You need to push back a secant tan. If you end up doing a u sub for tan x, you need to push back a secant squared. Okay, so let's take a look at what that entails in this section. So I have 27. I have the integral of secant to the 6th power 4x times tan of uh, 4x dx. Okay. Okay, so in this case, I guess there's really nothing to push back. I have, well, is there? Is there really? Um, I can push back a secant and then do a u sub for a secant. Okay, so let, um, let's push back. And in my notes, I did it a weird way, um, and it's really not, really not making me happy very much. Well, Okay, let's let's push back a secant squared, okay, just to be sort of consistent and see. So I'm going to end up doing a, a, a u sub for tangent. And you'll see the flavor is very similar to what we did with the sines and cosines. All right, so it's the integral of secant to the fourth power of 4x times tan of 4x times secant squared of 4x dx. So I just took two factors of secant and pushed them to the back of the integral. Okay, now I'm going to use a Pythagorean identity to rewrite secant to the fourth x. So this will be the integral of um, secant squared of 4x squared times tan of 4x times secant squared of 4x dx. So this will equal the integral of secant squared is the same as 1 plus tan squared, or tan squared of 4x plus 1 squared times tan of 4x times secant squared of 4x dx. So hopefully at this point you realize, oh, hey, I can do a u sub for tangent. And if you do a u sub for tangent, you would have had to have pushed back a secant squared, which is what we did, because that thing's going to cancel out with our... With our our uh, differential, right? So if we let u equal tangent of 4x, du will be secant squared of 4x times 4 dx. You got to do a chain rule. So dx will be um, secant squared of 4x um, all over the uh, crap. Uh, dx, sorry, dx is. Um, uh, du all over uh, 4 secant squared of 4x. Okay? Okay, so let's plot that into this integral. We have the integral of u squared plus 1 squared times u times secant squared of 4x times dx, which is now du all over 4 secant squared 4x. And you see, all right, the secant squares are going to cancel. And again, we'll have just a, a nice little power rule polynomial to deal with. Right, so there's a constant there. Be aware, you got to pull out a 1 fourth. Um, we can uh, FOIL out this thing. So we'll have u to the fourth plus 2u squared plus 1 times u du. And then we'll have 1 fourth. The integral of this thing will be u to the fifth over 5 plus 2u cubed over 3. Whoops, I forgot, I forgot to distribute the u. Sorry. Not yet. So 1 fourth integral of u to the fifth plus 2u cubed plus u times du. And then integrate, so you get 1 fourth uh, times u to the 6 over 6 plus 2u to the 4th over 4 is u to the 4th over 2 plus u squared over 2 plus c, and then distribute and back substitute and come home free. So um, distributing, I get u to the 6, and we said u is tan, so I get tan uh, 6th power 4x all over 24 plus tan to the fourth power 4x all over two, uh, 8 
and then plus tan to the second power of 4x all over 8 again, and then plus c. So when you're dealing with uh, products of secants and tans, you're going to end up um, with a sort of polynomials uh, in terms of tans or secants. Okay. Uh, let's look at the other version of this, this problem, something like number 25, where we have the integral of tan cubed 2t times secant cubed of 2t dt. Okay, so this time, the, because of the powers, this, that's what really tells you what the pushback. If I push back a tan secant, um, I, I'll have even powers, and I can convert uh, one or the other to one or the other. Right? So I'm going to have to do a u sub for secant, though, so I'll have to be converting tan squared into secant squared minus 1. Okay, so I have the integral of um, tan squared 2t times secant squared of 2t times uh, tan 2t secant 2t dt. Sorry, I had to smush that in. Uh, so this will equal the integral of, I'm going to rewrite tan squared in terms of secant. So tan squared is secant squared t minus 1, and then we have a secant squared, and this should be 2t, secant squared of 2t, and then there's this leftover secant 2t tan 2t dt, which will become, uh, will we'll cancel out after our u sub. So let's say our u be equal to secant of 2t, and then du, of course, will be this junk. So du is secant 2t tan 2t dt, and then the chain rule says we have to tack in a 2. So dt will be du all over 2 secant 2t tan 2t. And then we could rewrite everything in terms of u's. So we have u squared minus 1 times u squared times the secant 2t tan 2t times dt, which is now du all over 2 secant 2t tan 2t. There's a constant 1 half we can factor out, distribute the u squared, the secant 2t tan 2t's cancel, and we have the integral of u to the fourth minus u squared du. Okay, so this will be 1 half times u to the fifth over 5 minus u cubed all over 3 plus c. And then it'll be u to the fifth over 10. Let's back substitute too. So this will be secant to the fifth of 2t all over 10 minus secant to the third power of 2t all over 6 and then plus c. Um, right, so if you have just maybe a tan, what you're going to do is probably convert the secant squares. So if you have, um, let's, let's call it section 5, tan to uh, some power um, n of x where this n value is even, C convert it into secant squares using Pythagorean identity because we know how to integrate secant square. Okay, so in particular, let's, let's look at one. Um, the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tan to the fourth x dx. So this will be the integral of 1 minus, uh, what is tan squared? Tan squared is secant squared x minus 1. So that would be tan squared. I, I need this to be tan to the fourth, though, so I would have had to have squared that to get tan to the fourth. Um, we could FOIL this thing out. Um, but we're not going to get something that's useful. right? So, oh, can't do that. Uh, what else could we do? Let's split it up in the tan x uh, squared times tan x squared, and that's going to be uh, that's going to get the job done for us. So it's the integral of uh, tan squared x is uh, secant squared x minus one, and then we have this tan squared x dx, and then distribute this thing, and, and that'll 
that'll do the job. So we'll have secant squared x, tan squared x, dx as one integral, and then minus, um, I guess, the integral of uh, tan squared x, which seems like a lost cause, but remember, tan squared x is just secant squared x minus 1, and I know how to integrate both of these. This guy, I can do a u sub on tan because the derivative of tan is just secant squared. Right? So u is tan x, du will be the secant squared x dx. So this first integral, at least, is kind of done. Um, I'm letting u be tan, so this is u squared. And then the secant squared dx is just equal to du. Right? So I have u squared du minus this thing, which I'm replacing with secant squared x minus 1. And then I can, I can even easily integrate that. So the integral of u squared is u cubed over 3. u is tan, so we have tan cubed x all over 3. And then minus the integral of secant squared is tan x, and then plus x, and then plus c, but we have to evaluate. So remember the to evaluate when, when you're called upon to do so. If I plug in um, pi over 4, tan of pi over 4 is 1. Okay, So tan of pi over 4 is 1. 1 cubed is 1 all over 3. Tan, again, of pi over 4 is 1, and then plus pi over 4. Tan of 0 is 0, so we'll just have minus 0. Okay. So we end up with pi over 4 um, minus 2 thirds. Okay, uh, the last uh, two sections then, um, well, the first section, you, you kind of have a none of the above situation. So se section six, uh, none of the above helps. And in those cases, you probably just want to convert everything into sines and cosines and then start shuffling things back and forth and see what happens. Convert the sines and cosines and basically hope for the best. Um, the, the last section I want to look at are product to sum formulas, and I don't expect you to remember these, but they are in the homework. Right? And they come up every once in a while. So um, we'll just look at one and note the following um, identity cosine of mx times cosine of nx is equal to 1 half times the cosine of m minus nx um, plus the cosine of m plus nx. Uh, okay, so um, basically what you're going to do is if you have a product, an integral of a product of two uh, trig functions where their angles, their, the, the guts of the trig functions are different. For example, the integral of cosine 2x times the cosine of 6x dx. Um, you could use these formulas to rewrite them in ways that you will be able to integrate. So this will be equivalent to 1 half times the integral of cosine of 2 minus 6. Okay, so using this formula, this is m and this is n. Uh, 2 minus 6 is negative 4x, and then plus cosine of 2 plus 6, which is 8x. All right? And then I can do a u sub if I want. Uh, one other thing, cosine is an even function, so I could rewrite cosine of negative 4x as cosine of 4x, and then plus cosine of 8x dx. Uh, if you need a u sub, you know, u would be 4x, so du would be 4dx, so dx would be um, 1 fourth du. In this case, dx is 1 eighth du, so you have a factor of 1 fourth here, uh, times the integral of sine is, the integral of cosine is sine, and then plus the 1 eighth times the integral of cosine again is sine. And then plus C, and that's really it. Just distribute, you know, make it look pretty. Right. But like I said, I'm not going to harp on those too much. In my work, they've not come up. Right. Uh, so uh, 
we'll let you go with that. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.